Hi everyone, I'm Zayas, and today I'm here to review Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale is a fantasy, action, comedy, etchy shonen manga with emphasis on shonen. Hiro Mashima had started working on this manga from 2006 all the way until 2017, starting it right after he had finished Rave. Rave was sort of this raw, unrefined, unfinished product which had a few good ideas here and there but was sort of offset by its lack of polish. The story writing lacked quite a bit, but there were some pretty memorable and enjoyable characters, as well as some pretty decent artwork. And although the final arc was a complete mess, you would think that maybe he would improve on some of these flaws in Fairy Tale. But instead of going in one direction, he actually ends up going in the complete opposite direction and follows a lot of shonen tropes which really hurt Rave's storytelling. The biggest and most important issue in all of Fairy Tale is the lack of tension. There is absolutely no tension in all of Fairy Tale because you know the good guys are going to win and the bad guys are going to lose. Rave had this issue as well but it wasn't nearly as bad as Fairy Tale. Whereas in Rave, Haru will sort of power up and be able to defeat a few villains by getting stronger. Natsu will seemingly power up out of nowhere and just be able to defeat anyone who stands in his path no matter how much the author hyped up the villain. The most annoying part about all of this is that Natsu and the main characters will constantly harp on about the power of friendship and how they're defeating the enemies because of the power of friendship. Uh, most big shonens will mention this at least once, but Fairy Tale ends up mentioning this a completely obnoxious amount of times. It's mentioned in every big fight between any major villain and the main characters and it truly is frustrating at times. It even hampers your enjoyment of the action scenes from time to time. Usually the action scenes are have quite decent artwork but sometimes when you just notice the characters rambling on and on about the power of friendship it's hard to enjoy like the final one good scene of artwork that's in the entire thing. And even though it was stated about like a million times in this thing, it's hard to believe that these characters are actually that good friends with each other to the point they would die for each other. Like what have they even done for one another in the series? You see the characters get together like maybe once. Like I've seen Urza and Natsu have like one moment with each other, but most of the other characters have not even that. And it's hard to believe that they would die for something like that. A series which did this much better was Hunter x Hunter, where when Ging got punched by Leorio, you can tell that Leorio cared about Gon. But if Leorio had just said, I care about Gon a lot, it's hard to believe him. I think a lot of these issues probably stem with how open and free the power system is. The power system in Fairy Tale is just magic. What does magic mean? It means literally anything. <laughs> Magic is used as in any way with zero restrictions other than when he decides to introduce restrictions, but then sometimes he'll remove those same restrictions. So it is literally whatever he wants. This makes it really easy for Hero just to draw some big fireball or some like some pretty boring attack and just give it a new name and call it the end of the fight right there. The formula used in this thing is so bland and repetitive it's really boring and it's used in every single arc. They'll meet an overpowered villain, Natsu will start fighting the villain, he'll have almost lost, and then as soon as he's about to lose, the villain will lose because Natsu will get some power up. I don't think there was a single fight against a major villain where the main characters were ahead on at first. It's always the villains who are ahead and it makes it super boring and it makes it really easy to see where the story is going. And whereas in Rave, some characters get pretty decent motivations, especially the villains, the villains in Fairy Tale don't explain themselves at all as to why they're evil. They're just evil. And it's quite a clear good versus evil, and why the main characters are good, I don't know. They, they're not very morally upstanding. And the villains just do stupid stuff for no reason. It's kind of hard to understand what's going on. And this is really the most confusing when a character switches from evil to the good side. And this happens like a lot of times in this manga and shonen manga do, the, do this a few times, but it happens way too much in fairy tale. And every time this happens, the villain goes from being like vicious and like ruthless and will murder several people 
to be, being a completely nice guy and just just having a good time, just chilling out. Like, yeah, maybe I murdered 10 people, but I'm, I'm okay now. It's all good. And I did say villain motivations are pretty questionable, but the character motivations in general are just super questionable. Like, when Natsu is first introduced, we are told that he is looking for Igneel, and he does nothing to look for Igneel for the first... Actually, he doesn't look for Igneel in the entire manga. Never mind. And stuff like Grey really wanting to defeat End when Xeroth is really the one he should be trying to defeat, but for narrative purposes, he put him against Grey. And there are just tons of other plot holes which don't make sense, and they're so glaring that it's kind of hard to overlook. The villain's plans in particular are especially bad and have tons of plot holes in them, from the very first villain to the very last. And it kind of was what made Xeroth and Acknowledgia kind of hard to fathom for me, because at first they were pretty interesting characters with cool backgrounds and good character designs. But as you read on, their plans just made literally no sense. And you kind of think of them as just characters who are just dumb and pretty unsuited to be like the final boss of a series. If there was one thing that you could say was a minor redeeming quality in this work, it would be the artwork. But the artwork isn't even that great all the time. It only really shows up in spreads and some backgrounds near the end of the work. As I said before, the build-up to a lot of fights is pretty lackluster because you just get to see these characters arguing about how much they love their friends. But once you get to that final panel where Natsu will beat the villain or one of the main characters will beat the villain, it does look good. But is it worth sitting through like 20 chapters for one panel build-up? I don't think so. And the backgrounds can be impressive at times and detailed, but again, it's at times. It's not like the artwork is consistently good. He'll only really put an effort into the final couple fights in an arc, or probably the final fight in an arc. A lot of attacks used by the characters aren't very innovative, but it can be made to look good in these panels. I'm kind of split on some of these character designs. Some characters have pretty good designs like Gajil, Laxis, Gildarts, but then there's characters like Urza, Mac Markarov, um, Juvia that I really didn't like that as much. You can add Wendy and her idol friend to that list. That part felt super out of place in the series when they basically just became idols. And not to mention every villain in the series except Xeroth and Acknowledgia are drawn way too goofy. And most of these new character designs are pretty lackluster and it's hard to take these guys seriously. But then when you look at some of the older character designs from Rave, which got reused in here, it was a little annoying at first because you kind of get to see him reuse like a lot of characters. Siegfried was the one that annoyed me the most because he used him maybe like four times in Fairy Tale, and he just slapped different characters in them and it made me feel like he was being a little bit lazy. Other than Siegfried and Agnaldia and Xeroth, the villain which I remember the most is the literal Owl Man. That guy is more memorable than half of the villains in this series. And also for about the reused character designs, the worst part was a lot of their personalities were very, very similar to the characters they were originally from, such as Grey, such as Siegfried, and Juvia, actually Juvia was different at least, but there were so many characters which just seemed like so similar that it, it just threw me off. And Plu is quite literally a straight upgrade from Happy. No way you're telling me Plu looks better than Happy. The fake bait deaths which happened were so obviously fake that it kind of made me chuckle a little bit. At least he tried something different I guess, but if you knew where the series was headed you know that nobody of importance will die in fairy tale. If you are a big fan of fan service, this series has a ton of it, and it's really over the top. But for me, it really couldn't help with the monotonous, boring mess most of the series was. The series just overall felt super goofy. I think maybe he was trying to aim more towards children than Rave, even though Rave was also probably targeted at a pretty young demographic. But it's really hard to take anything which happens in Fairy Tale seriously at all. The most glaring, horrible example of this was the alternate reality arc. This arc was my least favorite in the entire series, at least afterwards with the Arachian Six, or whatever you like to call them, 
they were somewhat interesting and had cool character designs and okay fights. But the alternate reality was, it was like kitty land. Overall, there's some decent artwork, but the lack of tension, bad characters with bad personalities, really confusing motivations, and just horrible storytelling throughout this entire thing just made me really not enjoy myself when I was reading this. I'm feeling a light to decent too. Please like the video uh, or leave a comment if you like the video. And thanks everyone. I'll see you in the next one.